So there was a woman um, during the time of the Buddha who lost her only child, her son, I think. So she came to the Buddha, you know, grasping his body in her arms and in so much despair and asked the Buddha, please bring him back, bring him back. You know, and she was grieving and grieving. And so the Buddha, the way he dealt with this is he said, you know, go to every house in the village and collect a, a single mustard seed from every household where no one has seen anyone die or known anyone who has died. So, of course, she went to every house um, and she came back empty-handed because everyone has seen or known someone who has died. By the time she got back to him with this, she realized that it's not just her suffering, but that suffering pervades our experience as human beings. And so this was how she healed, actually. You know, she wanted to fix the situation. She couldn't fix the situation. But through the process of talking to other people who have experienced uh, uh, death, she was able to heal and, and release the body of her son. It's interesting, I have a friend, uh, and she lost her son when he was a teenager. And she says that you know, she was in so much despair, but then she started going to a support group where there were other parents who had children who died. And that's where, that's where she made that shift from there I am suffering to there is suffering. And it's so touching. She says that she has a little locket on her neck and she puts a little mustard seed in it just to remind her, you know, of that story of the Buddha. It's very touching when she told me about that. So in some ways I think what the Buddha is telling, telling us um, particularly in his very first teaching, but it comes out all the time, is that is to behold suffering. Behold suffering because it has something to offer us. You know, when we're able to bear witness, maybe is a good way to say it, bear witness or behold suffering, it brings us from, you know, this place of fear to bravery, you know, it brings us from a state of I am suffering to there is suffering and, and an ability to hold that, to be big enough to see that. It brings us from you know, a very tight, contracted sense of self and you know, pain to, to a more compassionate way of being, you know, she, that you can understand others having come out of that I am suffering to there is suffering. Um, it brings us from a place of isolation to interdependence so that we're not victims. If there is suffering, this is how life is. You know, we're not victims of our lives. Um, and all these things, bravery, compassion, you know, understanding interdependence, um, not being a victim, these are all experiences we don't, uh, ex we don't connect to suffering. These are big, the best of human beings, you know, the best of being human. Um, so it's quite interesting because if you start to uh, be able to behold suffering, to bear witness to suffering, these lines between pleasure and pain, you know, suffering and happiness get a little fuzzy. You know, if, if, if beholding suffering brings you, makes you brave, you know, and brings compassion, you know, what is suffering then? What does suffering become for us then? And sometimes things that we consider to be causes of happiness, you know, apple pie or whatever, <laughs> bring us grief. So this is the beginning of feeling the warmth of the practice. When you start to get a little blurry about pain and pleasure, you know, this is a certain kind of intelligence, I think that occurs when you start to question, uh, when you, it makes you stop automatically pushing away suffering and automatically trying to grasp and you know, lure in pleasure. It's a very interesting um, experience for a practitioner and I really feel like it indicates that something is, is changing um, in us and it is very much the spirit of practice to do this and have this happen. And when I think of all the great beings of all the important traditions, the great traditions, <laughs> religious traditions or spiritual traditions, you think that you know, they really understand this, this 
uh, you know, fuzzy line between pleasure and pain. And although they're quite free at heart, you know, and full of mirth, these people, you know, they accept <coughs> suffering. They include suffering into their experience. They don't try to live around suffering. Do you know what I mean? And that's why all these people, although they look so joyful, they just have a little glimmer of sadness in their eyes. Do you know what I mean? All these great teachers, not sadness like, I am suffering. Sadness that there is suffering. You know, that's the compassion part. There's just this glimmer of knowing. If there was all happiness and joy and we, you know, that would be very suspicious. You know, that would mean that you couldn't feel the world, you know. This practice is about feeling the world.